He calls himself the finest amateur boxer never to have made an Olympic team. He lost in the trials to Ray Mercer in 1988. I think both the good news and the bad news is those five championships. The good news, obviously, he was an outstanding amateur. The bad news is, why after two or three of those titles didn't he try to improve himself by turning pro? It suggests some weakness in his emotional or mental armor, and that's what Tommy Morrison wants to exploit tonight. Bent comes into the ring, a remarkably inexperienced professional fighter for his age. He's 28 years old, some say he's 29. He's had only 11 professional fights. In his very first professional fight, he was knocked out by a southpaw named Jerry Jones, and he didn't fight again for another 22 months. So the career got off to an extremely slow start. He can jump start it tonight. Now, Tommy Morrison insists that the theme from the movie 2001, thus Sprech Zarathustra, be played before he leaves his dressing room to enter the ring. And if he doesn't win tonight, it'll be at least in 2001 before he gets a title fight. Perhaps. Debbie Carrera, who is Lennox Lewis's trainer, told me today that if the best, the best bent shows up, he can win the fight. Pepe Correa, because of the money that Lewis can make for fighting Morrison, is scared to death of that possibility. Now the music changes to George Thorogood's Bad to the Bone, and that is Tommy Morrison's entrance music. He comes from Oklahoma about an hour's drive away from here, where he's bought a house recently, and where is a high school student, he was voted the man least likely to survive, meaning survive his teenage years. <laughs> well, he made he it out of a his, wild one. He made it out of his teenage years. Is he going to make it through his 20s? I think if there was another vote taken, he'd win that contest, too. Tommy has been known to party hardy. He says he's been walking the straight and narrow in anticipation of his title shot. Nicknamed the Duke because of his reported distant relation to the late John Wayne. He also has a distant relationship to some of the five heavyweight champions who have fought in Tulsa either before or after they won titles. Marvin Hart, Jess Willard, Jack Dempsey, Primo Canera and Max Bear all fought in Tulsa. You have just become the first boxing <laughs> analyst ever to draw a relationship between Tommy Morrison and Jack Dempsey. Nevertheless, or there's Primo the record. Canera. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. 38 wins, one loss, no draws. His career is really more defined by the loss than by the 38 wins because many questions about Tommy were raised in his fourth round knockout at the hands of Ray Mercer. Joe Lewis got knocked out before he won the title, so he's not in bad company. Tale of the tape, Morrison four years younger than Bent. They are similar in weight, but frankly, when you look at them close up, Tommy Morrison presents the bigger, stronger picture. Punch stat numbers, Larry. We're comparing the Carl Williams fight with Tommy Morrison because that's the fighter who most resembles Bent. And in that fight, Morrison threw very, very few punches, as you can see, compared to what Bent did against Mark Wills in his last fight. Although in his later fight against George Foreman, Morrison punched considerably more often and harder. There are the jabs, and that tells you what kind of fight this is. Bent the boxer, 
Morrison, the slugger. And Tommy has thrilled the crowd by entering the ring in a Tulsa Oilers hockey jersey. Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Tommy Morrison and Michael Bent will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Organization. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Brilliantly done, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and Holden Productions, in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, supervisor in attendance at ringside, Mr. Ed Levine of Miami, Florida. All the other officials will remain the same except for the judges and referee. The judges assigned by the WBO, scoring on a 10-point must system are Harry Davis of Toronto, Canada, John Rupert of Miami, Florida, and Dr. Clark San Martino of Kingston, Rhode Island. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action Working for the second time in a world championship bout from Kansas City, Missouri, Danny Campbell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBO. Championship of the world. Introducing Hurst. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with gold, black, and green trim. Weighing in at 226 pounds. He's originally from London, England, but now lives and fights out of the Big Apple, New York City. He brings a professional record of 10 victories with five KOs. Only one defeat on his record. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number nine in the world by the WBO, he is the challenger, Michael. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 227 pounds, wearing the black trunks with stars and bars trim. His professional record, 38 victories, 33 KOs. Only one defeat. He's originally from right here in the state of Oklahoma, now fighting out of Kansas City, presenting the WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Tommy, the Duke Morrison. Let's go, gentlemen, come out here. All right, pretty much two seconds right here. Right here. Right here. How about over here? Right here. All right, gentlemen, we're in all the rules of the dressing room. Let's have a good, clean fight. This is for a heavyweight championship of the world. Got a bunch of both of you shake hands. Let's come out and fight. Any organization that calls this a heavyweight championship fight Ready? defines itself, but that doesn't mean it can't be a good fight. I think the bent corner is coming out taunting. That means whistling through the graveyard to me. Michael Bent in his last fight prior to this one against Mark Wills broke his right hand and won anyway. Didn't have the brace taken off of his right hand until the third week of September. George Foreman in the past has told us it is impossible for a fighter to come all the way back from an injury like that this rapidly. Yeah, it takes a lot of time before you get confidence, even if he had ever had confidence. They said he was a good amateur, but the pros are totally different. Big question here, is Bent strong enough to handle Morrison's power? The early returns say no. The thing is, if Morrison can control his burst. Oh, Tommy stunned by a right hand, and down goes Morrison. He has been plagued by a weak chin. Four, five, six. Morrison is embarrassed more than anything in the world. Quiet the crowd a little bit. And Bent again lands the right. Now we saw Morrison go down twice in the same round. A 
against Carl the Truth Williams. Seven, eight. One more oh, knockdown, and this is over, and ready. Michael Back. Bent knows it. Three knockdown rule in a box. Michael Bent on the verge of a big moment, and he's got it. That's it. A first round KO for Michael Bent. And there goes Tommy Morrison's $8 million payday. A lot of very unhappy people at ringside, as well as in this arena. It's sort of the feeling that I felt in Tokyo when Mike Tyson was supposed to fight Amanda Holyfield next, and he lost to Buster Douglas. This is the third time this year something like this has happened in the heavyweight division. I think Tommy Morrison picked the wrong style to fight this guy in the first round. He didn't need to mix it up so quick. He hurt him and tried to finish it off. Couldn't control his burst of power. It was exactly what Ben expected. It was what Morrison told us he was going to do yesterday, George. He had the same question in his mind that I mentioned about whether Ben could handle his power. As it turned out, the equation worked the opposite way because Tommy gave Michael Bent the chance to get off. Right, and he was hurt. Tommy just stood in front of him and waited for him to hurt him back. He should have controlled himself, hurt him casually, coasted along, and just kept hurting this guy, but he didn't do it. All right, let's take a look at how all of this happened, George. As you take a look at an, a Michael Bent who is clearly overcome by this sudden change in his career. This man has gone from virtual unknown to heavyweight title contender in a matter of seconds. Michael, turn around. If you ask me, there's too many firecrackers. All right, we're going to take a look at all three knockdowns. Now, early, Bent had been stunned by a left hook, so Tommy came in, and that's what happened. Walks right into an unnecessary mix-up that he needed not even have. Hurt the guy, hurt the guy, and experience that should have taken him over. Then he gets right up and starts to exchange again, which was not necessary. That made two, and at that point, there were still a minute and 40 seconds remaining in the round. And Morrison George showed none of the professional skills necessary to get out of trouble. It's called overconfident. He never would have gotten out of there with a fighter like that that he feared and overwhelmed him in the first round. If he had started the fight the way he fought you for 12 rounds, you got to have a certain amount of a fear to be a, a, a good fighter. That fear was not present tonight, and it cost him his title. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Your attention, please. Referee Danny Campbell enforces the three knockdown rule, the official time, one minute. 33 seconds into the very first round, the winner by TKO and new WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Michael. A nice moment as Tommy Morrison comes over to congratulate a still tearful Michael Bent. And now Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Larry. Michael Bent, you can have two or three T's at the end of your name now. Congratulations. Why were you crying after this fight? Uh, if people knew my travels, man, they'd be crying too, you know what I mean? Uh, just, just, just a dream come true, man. 20 years, man. It's like all the things that my personal problems, my mother, I love you. Uh, struggle with hard. My father, I love you. People will talk sometimes later on. You know, people in Cambridge Heights, Jamaica, London, I love all, all you guys for supporting me. Uh, Hope, I love you. Uh, uh, big up, Warren. Uh, let's go to the fight, uh, Mike. Uh, Michael. Go. You expected him to come out the way he did, didn't you? And what were you, were you ready for it, and what did you do? Well, 
if you hit me, I'm going to fight. You know what I mean? I, I had a game plan. My game plan was to box Tommy, but he hit me, got me kind of pissed off. I said, listen, let's do this, man. You know what I mean? He, he, he seemed to do more than that. He seemed to hurt you a couple, you know, wobble you a couple listen, times. Listen, my first fight, I got stopped. I hope this shuts up all the damn critics who <laughs> said I couldn't do it. Who said I had no chin. Who said I was suspect. Was, who questioned my character. Hope to stop all you guys. My friends so were you, my character. So were you seriously hurt or buzzed when he hurt when he hit you a couple times? Did you see it? <laughs> well, I got I saw it, but I want to know what you felt. What do you think, Larry? I thought you were buzzed. Yeah, yeah, of course I was. That's why I knocked his ass out. <laughs> well, I was buzzed. <laughs> so we woke you up. All right, let's take a look at the knockdowns and you describe what happened after you were buzzed and how you felt. The first knockdown. Uh, uh, right hand, right over the top. I mean, he, was, he was shaking up. I don't think uh, Tommy, uh, he had the rest, he had the rest of, excuse me, had the rest of my, my uh, hand speed. And my punching power, obviously. But, but you know what? Hand speed is punching power. So, you know. All right, here's the second knockdown. Left, left hook right there. Right. You think that after he buckled you, he got a little wild and careless? No. I mean, listen, I mean, if I was to say that, that, that he got wild and careless, which means that I'm implied that, uh, had, uh, no, it implies that you took advantage of it. Well, you're implying right then. Here's the third. Did you realize that if you got him here, that it was over? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was going to, I was going to bust him up as, 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 I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about stupid now. I mean, I'm just calm down, relax. Okay, now, I was, uh, the right Thank hand, it was very, very good. <laughs> wait a minute, now for somebody who wants to be a fighter, for, for, wait a minute, for somebody, who's a, for somebody who wants to be a ring announcer, getting a little too emotional know, here, Michael, but, 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 you've, but you've earned it. What do you Thank think you. will come up next? Well, right now, um, I'm just going to enjoy this one, but as far as tomorrow's concerned, yo, take one world, man. Riddick, I love you, brother, my man, but you got something I want. Lennox, I love you too. We got some my war. Let's do this, man. Okay, we'll see what they have to say. Hey, what's up, brother? Back to your ringside. There you go. There you go All right, the references there, of course, to Lennox Lewis and Riddick Bowe, both of whom bent knows well from his amateur days and from his work as a sparring partner, George. He's been in the ring with the best guys. Maybe that helped him tonight. Maybe so, but in my mind, Bent is less than an average fighter who did something great tonight. He got out there and caught a guy overconfident, hit him with a right hand that he never recovered from. That is not the Tommy Morrison that we can see a lot more of in the future. Well, let's see what Tommy Morrison has to say about what happened to him here as Larry stands by with him. All right, Tommy, you heard him, buckled him twice early in the round. Did you get a little careless then, do you feel? I think I got a little bit careless. I uh, started uh, waiting in uh, without, uh, uh, with very little defense. Like I caught with a good shot. You know, it happens to anybody, uh, but this is, uh, uh, by far, uh, not the end of me. I'll be back. I learned from uh, my mistakes. That's what we're going to do tonight. Why did you want to take this fight, which many people thought was dangerous, including your own handlers, uh, rather than go straight to Lennox Lewis for a much larger purse? Well, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't think that. Uh, I, I don't think that. Uh, I mean. I, I wasn't real impressed with his skills. I don't think uh, yeah, he was pretty decent, but it's just my mistakes of what uh, you know what hurt us. Uh, but I'm a young fighter. I'll bounce back from things like this. I have before in the past, and that's uh, just one of those things you have to try and learn from. You're saying you you underestimated what his power, his his willingness to take a good punch. I don't think I no I, I didn't under, uh, underestimate his power. Any uh, you know anyone in the heavyweight division can hurt you. Uh, defensive skills is something that uh, I feel we've. Uh, have improved on, but obviously tonight, uh, you know, everyone gets caught with that shot every now and then, and, uh, you know, he capitalized on it, and, and I didn't. Dumb question. If you had it to do all over again, would you fight Michael Bent or wait for Lennox Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I leave that up to my managers. You know, they usually make the right decisions in that area. Uh, you know, these are sort of things that you learn from. You know, you, 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 these sort of things happen. Fighters either bounce back from it or they don't. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I was impressed by, uh, you know, the way he mixed up his punches. But uh, Tommy Morrison beat Tommy Morrison tonight. I stayed in the middle a little bit uh, too long with, and got caught with some good shots. And any man over 200 pounds can hurt you. So thank I you very much. Thank you very much, Tommy. A very expensive lesson. <laughs>